right going on now it says here the book of Joshua chapter 3 verse the rest of verse let me start at 3 again 4 again Joshua 3 and 4 yet there shall be a space between you and it about two th what you know what I'm gonna read I'm gonna read first one again and Joshua arose early in the morning and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over and which was when then there here which is which is therefore then here this is the river Jordan here it branches out into the Jabbok Jabbok River and here we were at the camp at Shittim Abdel Abel Shittim Abel oh Abel yeah Abel Shittim there was another Shittim too but anyway Jericho is here across the river going back to over here so it said okay cool at Shittim okay and it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host because the officers went and talked to the army of Israel and they commanded the people saying when ye see the ark of the covenant of Yahweh your power and the priests the Levites bearing it then ye shall remove from your place and go after it yet there shall be a space between you and it about two thousand cubits by measure come not near unto it that ye may know the way by which ye must go for ye have not passed this way here for two and one of the other reasons is why they shouldn't get close to the Ark of the Covenant Numbers chapter 1 verse 51 and when the tabernacle set it forth the Levites shall put it down take it down and when the tabernacle is to be pitched the Levites shall set it up and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death so the Israelite that that is not a Levite if they come near they should be put to death so you can't you shouldn't come near the tabernacle of the Lord so it says here and the children of Israel shall pitch their tents every man by his own camp and every man by his own standard throughout their host so when the, and, and it looked like this let me see tabernacle this this and it looked like this so you had the Levites round about it and, and and a space between that and then you had the other tribes you know sprinkled around them as it is going to explain here and the children of Israel shall pitch their tents and, and every man by his own camp and every man by his own standard throughout their host throughout their army but the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, which I just showed you, round about it. That there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel, so that they don't die. That's the point. And the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony. And the children of Israel did according to all that Moses, the, all that the Lord, Yahweh commanded Moses, so did they. And if I'm correct, there was also in the book of Numbers chapter 18. I don't want to go up in it. I'm just looking. If I find it, I find it. I'll tell you. I'll show you. And if not, then okay, leave it. Hmm. No, I think it's 17 then. Verse 10. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Bring. No, no, no. Verse 13, whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord of the Lord shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? So now they're afraid because they was like, wait a minute. So if we come close to it, we're going to die. Okay, I'm starting to panic right now. I mean, we're all going to die then because I might do it by accident. Well, he was, you know, they was kind of talking tough here, you know, because they was like, no, the Lord is not only dealing with Levi. The Lord is dealing with all the 12 tribes, all of us, all of us. That's not the case <laughs> and if you come near i'll kill you that's what the lord said because you think you're tough you're not that important i put my blessing upon the levites they can come near and you can't so that's the that's the that's the thing of the lord right so going back to over here now it says in joshua chapter 3 verse 5 and joshua said unto the people sanctify yourselves for tomorrow yahweh will do wonders among you so how do you sanctify yourself what does that mean well if you go to the book of exodus chapter 19 verse 9 
And Yahweh said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, which is a chariot. Spaceship, UFO, if you didn't know what I, what I just mean with chariot. That the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their clothes. So that's one of the ways that you sanctify yourself. And be ready against the third day. For the third day, Yahweh will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt shed bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, nor or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount, which is a mountain, shall surely be put to death so if you touch it you die so don't come near don't come close there was a bound round about it and in the middle was the the mountain and then moses came was only allowed he came in and then he was allowed to go up on the top of the mountain there shall not a hand touch it but he shall surely be stoned or shot through with an arrow of course because they didn't have guns whether it be beast or man so even an animal need to get killed if the animal comes close and you know you can't control animals if it's a dog and he wants to go take a pee or something like that or he wants to see or uh, smell something or he wants to he sees another animal running there and then he wants to go run toward it yeah, he's gonna be put to death it shall not live when the trumpet sounded long they shall come up to the mount And Moses went down to the mount unto the people and sanctified the people and washed their clothes. That's right. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. Don't have sex. That's how you sanctify yourselves. No sex. No, don't bust a nut. You know why? Because bussing a nut is making you unclean. So... You need, and, and if you and if you want if you need to sanctify yourself then you're then you're in, um, then you can't bust on that. So it says here Leviticus chapter fifteen verse. So it doesn't matter how you if maybe she sucks you off. Maybe you want to do the other thing. Yeah, you can't. Leviticus fifteen and sixteen. If any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the evening. So until the sundown, you're unclean, but you need to wash yourself before you want um, before sundown. Then when the sun is down, that's the beginning of the other day. The, that's the night of the new day, which is the beginning of the other day, the new day. Which is the night. Then you're clean. Again. Okay. And every garment and every skin were on the seed of copulation, which is your sperm, you bust that nut, shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even so you wash your seed with wash the thing with water right the woman also whom man shall lay with what the woman also with whom man shall lie with the seed of copulation they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even right and also when a woman is bleeding at the at the at the, at the you know at the legs between her legs She's also unclean. So that's also a part of uh, being unclean. So if that was the case, if one of the women were unclean, when he said, uh, go sanctify yourselves, which is here. If, 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 if your daughter or your mother was unclean, then she need to be put out the house for six days. And by the way, it's not put out the house on the street, no. Back in the days, we had... We had um, different houses for our wives different wives uh, different houses let's say a man has three house, three wives then he would have three houses or in this case three tents and then later on it turned into houses and stuff like that because when we came into the land of Israel we already had houses made up for us uh, so <laughs> all we needed to do was just inhabit them because we had houses from the heathen nations <laughs> which we took them Deuteronomy chapter because we was living in tents before that remember that we was living in tents before that for 40 years dwelling around in circles <laughs> in the in the wilderness <laughs> until everybody got old and died 
And then the Lord, when they, after they died, then the Lord did this. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10. And it shall be, when Yahweh thy power shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, which is what we're reading right now in the book of Joshua, because this didn't happen back then, because this is the book of Deuteronomy, and Moses was still alive. It was after Moses' death, then we went into the land. But this was already prophesied unto them when Moses was alive, while he was alive. Because the Deuteronomy is Moses wrote this. So he was talking. To Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities. That's what the Lord is going was going to give us, because we didn't have those cities yet. Which thou buildest not. So we took that. But why? Because they was committing evil in the land, so the Lord said, go kill them. And, and take everything that they have <laughs> so that was funny and houses full of so you might think like well that's the same thing that the Edomites did to us we build their land no no it's not the same thing we we was enslaved we, we was not supposed to be but anyway that's a whole nother story but the point is that these devils did things off of vengeance these devils did things because uh, Ezekiel they took it too far that's what they did they took it too far they wasn't allowed to do the things that they was doing. That's one of the reasons why they're going to get Obadiah 1 verse 18. Bye bye Esau. You made it too, you, you did too much. And houses full of all good things which thou fillest not. And wells digged which thou diggest not. Vineyards and olive trees which thou planted not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full. See? Right. Right. But we needed to keep serving the Lord <laughs> but we didn't but now the Lord is waking us up back again so Lord willing he has mercy on us and he said he will so yeah slowly but surely we're seeing it He's he has mercy on his elect because the wicked of our people they've been smoke left and right man for tomorrow yeah okay I read that so sanctify yourself okay that's how you sanctify yourself Leviticus uh, 15 you know Wash yourself with water and your clothing also. And stay away from having sex and busting that nut, for example, and stuff like that. And, and yeah, okay, go on, go on, verse 6. <clears throat> and Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. And you should already know what the Ark of the Covenant basically looked like. Which is, wait a minute. Which is going into this. This is the Ark of the Covenant. And then, you know, this thing was uh, for that to set up the tent. They pitched it. And it's the inside. And it's uh, first temple. No, the tabernacle. First temple. Second temple. This is the devil. This is this has nothing to do with us. Just as has how just as how they have nothing to do with us. They have nothing to do with us. They shouldn't be around you, the congregation. You shouldn't let them in your party. Verse 7, Joshua 3 and 7. And Yahweh said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. That's dope, man. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. So he told them, When you come to the to the, 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 the front of the river Jordan, you need to stand up in the water of Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and the words, and hear the words of Yahweh our power, your power. And Joshua said, Hereby ye know he shall, sorry, hereby ye shall know that the living power is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Parasites, and the Gergesites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Because if you look at this map over here, you would see that, let me see something, this one here. You would see this now if you the kings divided in joshua we were, we're not there yet i didn't read about it yet but i'm gonna a little bit talk about it but not too much actually i'm not going to talk about it i'm just going to give an example now it's uh here in the green where you can see that's when moses killed people <laughs> 
it's funny to say that because you'll be looking at him like, hey, Moses killed people? Yeah, he did. He killed a lot of people. And you can read that in the book of Joshua chapter 13, if I'm correct. Let me see. There's a Joshua 13. I'm not there yet, obviously, but Joshua 13 and uh, let me see. 11. All the kingdom of Og and Bajan, which reigned in Ashtaroth, and in Edri, or Edrai, who remained of the remnant of the giants. For these days did Moses smite and cast them out. He killed them. Of course, with the armies of Israel. But still, we killed them. That's funny. You wouldn't think of that, right? You don't see that in the movies. When they talk about Moses and stuff like that, you don't see that. Why would they teach him? They're devils. You need to teach them from your own people. You need to learn from your own people, not from a devil. His movies. What are you doing to yourself? Uh, this is the time of Moses where we had it too. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 8. And five of you, five of you Israelites, right? Let me start here. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. These evil beasts was man, there was some crazy type of reptilians, dinosaurs if you didn't if you don't know. Uh, other type of crazy paranoid strong butcherly like animals, crazy strong powerful animals that was man if you see them you your heart will fail. Those type of animals were there. and the animals back then were stronger, bigger, more ferocious, more powerful than the animals from now. You can read about that, in, I think the book of 2nd Esther chapter 5, where it shows you that the animals started to get smaller also, just a lot, just just like us. We also started to get smaller also, you know, because a lion used to be way, way bigger about two or three hundred years ago. Lions was bigger back then. They're smaller now. They're still big, I'll tell you that. They used to be bigger. How about that? But a lot of them they exterminated. These devils murdered them. You know, put them because when the devil loves you, when the devil loves something, what do they do? What? Okay. This is their love. This is how they love you. This is how they love you. It's a devil, so it thinks different. You might not think the same. If you see this animal, do you want to kill it? I don't want to kill it. I don't even want it in the house as a pet. You know? Uh, let me see. Mm. Yeah, can you eat it? You can eat it. Look at it. <laughs> look at how cute and stupid. Look, look at it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to chop your head off and fill you up in my room. Why would I want to do that to you? I'm not a devil. I'd rather eat you. You know? <laughs> that looks bad too that, that I just said like that. But actually it isn't. This is going to sustain you for a few weeks. <laughs> At least he did something good. He kept me alive, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. All jokes aside. It's not 100% a joke. But yeah. All jokes aside. Uh. Mm. Yeah, uh, if we was to kill it, for example, for food, it was nothing wrong with that. But they don't do it for food. You have to understand that part. That <laughs> their stomach is full when they go out hunting. They, their stomach is full, man. They full. They full. They're not doing it for for. Uh, For food's sake. <laughs> They're doing it for game's sake. That's why they call it big game. This they, they don't eat this. They don't eat this. Well, some of these devils, you know, actually, some of these devils they do eat it. They do eat lion meat. But this is not an animal that you should be eating. They're doing it for this. But back in the days, if you see uh let me see. When you saw Hamites with lion skins and stuff like that, boy, you, you should ask yourself, how did he get that? Yeah, not with a gun. Not with a gun. I'll tell you that. They have a sword and a, and a, and a buckler 
or, or a shield. And then they go and fight. And if they don't return, some of them tribes, in order to be a man, I'm talking about the Hamites, not the Israelites in the midst of them. I'm talking about the Hamites. Um, with a sword and shield. Why are our tribe hunting man eating lions in the past? Yeah, they didn't do it with a gun, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. They didn't do it with guns. Teach other people. The Maasai people teach us how to kill a lion. Demonstrate with a Maasai sword. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Why don't you go fight a lion with a sword, man? See how tough you really are. It's not even a paranoid fancy sword. It's just a simple looking sword like what? You would want a weapon. Because you're a coward. You know? The modern man. You can't do that. Until this African Messiah. Ditch lion killing as proof of manhood. They ditched it. But that's what they used to do. That was That's what they used to do. I'll put the link in the description box. African Messiah ditch lion killing as proof of manhood. Embrace running. Yeah, running away. Probably don't want to kill the lions anymore. I don't know. I don't know. But let's say this boy wanted to be a man and he goes out there in the woods dipping in his lolo and the, he needs to bring the... You can't cheat. Would <laughs> you go, yeah, I killed it, but I left it there. No, 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 no. What you need to be doing is bring it back to them as proof and then they declare you a man. That's a fucked up thing. I'm telling you that. <laughs> and when you don't come back, well, then it's back to the drawing board. Wife come what we need to make another boy we're gonna call him the same name <laughs> we're gonna call him the same name his name is Saidi Olongo Untuktuk. Hmm? we're gonna do this okay let's go let's go make another one yeah that, that <laughs> you would have to do that if he doesn't come back you know <laughs> if he doesn't come back then you know what the situation is yeah he's dead that's <laughs> that's right well, that's a good way for population control. Devils. I'm talking about the Edomites, you know, the dead devils. That's a good way for them for population control. And also the, the lion population dropped from 250,000 to only 35,000. Because they killed them. To show their manhood. You know, so it's not only devils, but they, they yeah. This is also a wrong thing for me. You know, in my mind, I'd be like, nah, that's not needed. That's stupid. But it's better than the devil because they go out there and they kill 15 and they only kill one at one, at one and sometimes they die. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of fair. <laughs> I mean, his life is on the line. But the devil isn't. Because he's far away in his little comfortable little hole waiting for the lion to just pop up and poof from afar. Like a real, you know, coward. Compared to the Maasai, you're a coward. You, know, you scare ho. But anyway, going on. So this is the type of power that we used to have. Leviticus chapter 28, 20, uh, 26 verse 8. And five of you shall chase it. What? what? Sorry. Um, verse 6. And I will give you peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. So no wars would come upon us if we kept the law of the Lord. And ye shall chase your enemies. And they shall fall before you by the sword. And if you think this would be, this is, uh, how you call it, far-fetched? America has not seen war from outside attacking their land. 9-11 is fake, so, yeah. Yeah, you, you can't use that one. And the civil war, that's, they're fighting themselves. And that war was for money's sake. For the slaves' sake. They wasn't trying to help the slaves. They was hating on each other. That was, that was already like, the northern tribe versus the southern tribe with Israel. We was hating each other too. And they had the same thing. So that was one of the curses jumping up on them. All these curses shall come upon thine enemies that persecute thee and that hate thee. And the Lord is judging them slowly but surely. Now their curses is more visible. You know, their females hate their men. They hate their children. You know, stuff like that. They prostitute their daughters, which is also a curse that came upon them. I mean, if you 
it's a caucus male, an Edomite male, that actually created OnlyFans. He did it. So he's he's prostituting the daughters of his race for beneficial gain. Because how much did he make? I think it was like eight hundred million or something in. Uh, he pay himself weekly yeah this is the founder of paid himself how much 1.3 million a day and that's that's UK based he paid himself 338 mm. roughly 1.3 million roughly for a day in 2020 and that would be like something with 80 billion or something like that I don't know I looked it up one time didn't didn't wait let me see didn't I did not uh, fully remember the the, the, the uh, actual account but that's a lot of money <laughs> that's a lot of money paying for prostitutes that you ain't having sex with that's a lot of money collectively that's a lot of money collectively. Individually is even a lot of money for somebody you don't have sex with. Yeah, I'd rather pay a female for sex. I don't do it, but I'd rather pay a female for sex than uh, than pay for some nude pictures. I mean, what am I getting? Nothing. You get nothing. You literally get nothing for giving them money. You get nothing. A picture is nothing. Well, <laughs> what can I do with a picture? Look at it. What's that gonna satisfy you? You know, it, it could satisfy you, but yeah, I'd rather have the real thing, right? If I pay you, if I don't pay you, then it's something else. I could just look at your little pretty, pretty pictures. I ain't got a problem with that. But the fact that I have to pay for those pictures, nah, nah, nah I'm not doing that. <laughs> I have standards. <laughs> I'd rather pay a prostitute. Yeah. It's it's a prostitute in the flesh or or nothing at all. How about that? Anyway, he paid himself a lot of money, but he's pimping him. That's what he's doing. He's he's the vehicle. As we, he's the pimp. Because these females think they're independent by going over there, but you got to pay a certain percentage of your money to him. Why? He owns the website. He causes you to be able to do those things. Because before this. And you would have to go out there on the street and put yourself up in a serial killer range of danger. He might come and snatch you up. Ain't nobody going to be worried about you. After they find like 25 bodies up in the neighborhood, <laughs> the forest or, the, or the, you know, the woods and waters and stuff like that, then they might be like, hey, is something wrong? Something is going on around here. Hmm. <laughs> That's about the time you in the spirit world. By the time that a lot of people start finding out, <laughs> there goes your, there goes your fabulous life, you know, you're, you're one percenter, you're a high value female mentality, there it, go, there it goes, you are higher, right, you are higher in the heavens, the spirit world, right, so, and five of you, and five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemy shall fall before your sword, right, so we would have total peace in the land and everybody that comes against us they will we will chase them and kill them of course <clears throat> because and and we would make a lot of children and then um yeah just like like i said america america has not been attacked by a foreign country not invaded nothing they do the invading and that's exactly the blessing that we had nobody could fight against us they would die you can't fight against America right now unless you want to die. <laughs> These devils can fight each other. Ain't no African country gonna kill Ukrainian people and pff, nothing is gonna happen to them. Ain't no Chinese gonna do that. Ain't no Japanese. Ain't no Japhetic people from uh, Malaysia and, and Thailand and Vietnam. Vietnam has a reason to attack America. They have a reason. I mean, look at what they did to them there. Orange... Uh,
they have a reason. Agent Orange. Ooh. Ooh. Fucked up. Agent Orange. U.S. to clean up toxic... V. This is real toxic. Not a stupid toxic relationship. I hate that word. Toxic masculinity. It's just, it's, those are trigger buzzwords that these devil use to weaponize the word. And now people are afraid of that word. Toxic. Oh, don't, don't use that word. They're scared. Like they saw a spider or something. You know? Crawling up on the back of their neck. In the mirror. Oh, get him off. So it says here. Toxic. Um, toxic. Venom. <laughs> sorry. Toxic Vietnam. Not Venom. Toxic Vietnam War. Air Base. It's not only there, bro. It's all over the place. Because they're being born in the 2000s still like this. When I first saw this picture, I thought it was Photoshop. I kid you not. I really thought it was fake. Like, what? How can your head be formed like that? What is that? And then I read about Agent Orange. And there was a... How you call that thing? There was an article about this. And there was also a video. It's also a video. They used to have uh, Jake penises like this. Yeah. Yeah, man. They used to have our, uh, you know, our genitals like that in a, in a jar. But yeah, these are the things that are are being born nowadays here in 2024. The things like this are being born. You know, that's what they're doing, and she's still happy. Probably doesn't know that the reason your child looked like this is because of the caucus, the ra the Edomite race. They spray things in the air, and you br breathe it in. And now your children is born like this. You know? All messed up. And you can... If you watch this movie called... First Blood with Rambo. John Rambo. Sylvester Stallone. The first one. You will see that in the beginning of the movie. As the credits are rolling. In the beginning of the movie. They said that it was the things that they were spraying in Vietnam that made the soldier sick because John Rambo was going to look up a friend that he served with in Vietnam and he said so where is he at and then basically she said oh he's dead the things that they sprayed in the air killed him yeah yeah man these are the things that these devils are, are guilty of but ain't nobody talking about that it's good I remember it it's good enough one of you should chase a thousand, right? Right? It, it says it, it doesn't say it here. In the book of Joshua, it says it. So, Lord willing, I alone, <laughs> I'm not trying to be tough or something. Like, I need the help of the Lord. But if I get the Lord's power, this, this spirit, like Samson, the spirit of the Lord came mightily and heavily, mightily upon Samson and have a heavily upon Samson, I'm going to chase you and you're not going to run away from me. Well, you're gonna run, but you're not gonna you're not gonna get away. You know, God will get you. Joshua twenty three and ten. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For Yahweh, your God, your power, He it is that fighteth for you, as He had promised you. So He already promised me that He's gonna give me that type of power. So I'm waiting. Look, I'm not with these people because these fuckers hate us too. I'll tell you that in a, in a second, because uh, these these Vietnamese people and these. Um, These Indonesian females and stuff like they fucking hate us too. They hate us too. So I don't give a shit about these people. But I'm still angry. Why? Because a devil is doing this. Who gives this devil the fucking right to do this? Oh, Satan. Okay, cool. Well, the Heavenly Father allows it, but he's still going to punish you for it. I mean, do you really want to do this to people? Really? I'm racist, but I'm not that racist, bro. I'll tell you that shit. <laughs> I hate people. But I don't hate you enough to do this to you. I'm like, I don't want to look at that. But the devil is proud of this. You know? Um, yeah, Agent Orange. This is what they did. They were spraying stuff there. And people was looking like this. If you was caught under that spray, you fucked up. But these children... This is in the 20s. This is not freaking... This is 2021. How how long ago was the Vietnam War? Hmm. 1955. Uh, the fall of Saigon 30. Cambodia. 
Um, let's see. 1955, 55, 75, 55, 75. And 1975. Oh, 50, I said 50, uh, 75, it was over. Okay, cool. All right, so how long did it take? Uh, what, 20? 20 years? 30? 20? It's 20 years, 20 years fight. They fought 20 years of Cold War, something like that. Yeah, anyway, so, yeah. So, that was 1975, it stopped. And this, yeah, this guy's from uh, Vietnam also. Yeah, he looked kind of dark, but did a lot of people like that look like this there. A lot of dark skinned people over there. And you had also a lot of Jakes that went over there. And uh, they lived there, and they died also. And that's what you see in the book of John, Ra the movie of John Rambo. It was a Jake man that died because of the because of this Agent Orange. Because of this, he was sprayed and betrayed by his people that he fought for in America. And still, he has that fucking hat on his head representing America. You dumbass. You, you can't make this up. Like a house Negro, you can't help them. You need to leave them alone and use them as an example to, to show the field Negroes like, look, 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 this is the house Negro. You need not to be like him. You should not be like him. You should watch out for him also because he's a demon too. He's a devil too. You need to watch out for him before he harms you for his God. And he will. I'm an American. This is America. America first. It's not about race. It's about... It's about, it's about being an American. I heard niggas say dumb shit like that, so I'm, I'm very wary of you. I'm looking at you like, hmm, this guy. I hope a cave monkey shoot you. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to get my wallet. And then I, I want to see you, you scream. Um, I'm an American in, that, in those days. I want to hear you scream that. Anyway, I'll put this link in the description box. I haven't read it myself, but I know the stories. I know the stories. Like I said, the movie John Rambo shows you that. It shows you that it was a Jake man. It was a friend of John Rambo in the movie. And they put, look, look, look. Sylvester Stallone didn't write that movie. He didn't write nothing. He just played out the script. He just wrote the script and, and played it out. He acted. The people that wrote the script knew exactly what they were doing. They was killing you niggas. Also, along with these people, these Japhetic people, they was killing you all. And they had a blast. They had fun. They was laughing while spraying the shit out of you. Meanwhile, there were soldiers there fighting against the other people of the land. And they would come and spray water over them. They probably think they thought it was some sprinkles. Yeah, until they start to get sick. Others, their skin burned from off of their body. You know, others, their teeth just... Anyway, I'm talking too much about this. Let me go on. So the Lord is going to avenge um, Israelites, first and foremost. And then, Lord willing, I'm going to come get you for this. <laughs> like I said, I'm not, I'm not with these people. They don't like us neither because they call us thieves. They have all type of names for dark-skinned people over there also. So this year. But then again, not all of them. I have to say that too, you know. So, but that don't matter. Still don't matter, you know. But still, in 2020, they are still being born like this until this day. Until this day. So this is what they did, right? So going on, the book of Joshua, <clears throat> chapter three, verse eleven. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now therefore, take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man, and it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, and, uh, sorry, the Lord of, the, of all the earth, Yahweh, shall rest in thee in the waters of Jordan, um, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above. And they shall stand upon a heap. Basically, it's going to turn into a wall. What wall? This one. Here. 
Exodus chapter 14, verse. Exodus chapter 14 verse 21 and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground so the Lord not only split the sea he made it dry and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left now you can figure out in your head you can you can picture it how it would look like let me see something Maybe I got a picture for you. Yeah. Yeah, this is good enough. Yeah, a wall. You know, but here it shows you that the water is wet. That's why they devils. The, I mean, the ground is wet. That's why they devils. Because that's not what it said. It's actually, oh shit, this is, oh, oh, this is accurate. This is much better. It looks dry. You know, like, uh, let me see, dry land. Dry ground, sorry, dry ground, sorry, not dry land. Well, dry land, yeah, it's the same. Dry land. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, like this. This is, yeah, this is good. Yep. Uh, because uh, what happens when water recites, it turns, it actually turns like this. It starts cracking. If mud, you know. If the land was, uh, if water was here, which it, which it was, and then the sun hits it, then the the earth the, the, it's it's not sand it's clay that's what i'm looking for the word the the clay well the ground that was wet would would, would then turn into clay or wet sand uh not sand earth sorry and then the sun would hit it and then it would start cracking because first it would look like this kind of kind of like this to a certain degree and then it starts shriveling up and then it's it's it will start cracking and then, then then it would look like this. So yeah, yeah, this 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 picture is kind of accurate actually. So dry ground, right? So that's the same. It was a wall on the left and a wall on the right. Now, it says here, verse fourteen, and it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests bearing. The Ark of the Covenant before the people. Oh yeah, because back in the, in the days we used to bear the Ark of the Covenant up on our sides, up on the uh, shoulders, right? With the with this Ark of the Covenant, with with this this thing, which was uh, a particular wood. I forgot. I think it was shittim wood. And I'm not sure. Which you can you can you can read it for yourself if you have the time. But it was. Let me see. Yeah, it was gold, but it was wood also. Mm. Yeah, it was gold overlaid. Oh, Akai. Akai wood. Wait, let me. If I'm correct, I saw Akai or something like that. Akai. Akasia. Akasia. Akakia, something like that. Akasia. Right, you can make very, very, very expensive uh, things with that. Um, they would sell it for very expensive. It's a very, it's a very beautiful wood, actually. Man, wouldn't you want to have this in your house? It's a very, very beautiful wood. I'll tell you that. It just looks beautiful. It looks natural. <laughs> By the way, a, a lot of wood look beautiful. You know, just just to put that out there. But this would look very beautiful for a house and this these are the type of things that we're gonna get so would you want to cook here i mean just looking at this makes me want to get up in the kitchen start cooking you know like it feels it feels good it feels good to be able to cook in a, in a clean kitchen like this it uh, feels better in a in a, in a spacious I, I should say spacious actually spacious well this is not spacious but it's better than mine, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's more spacious than mine. This is more spacious, actually, but still. 
these are the type of things that we're gonna get eventually you know all we need to do is pray to Yahweh Basham Yahushai and stay in Yahweh Basham Yahushai and everything is gonna be taken care of for us you know all we need to do is not worship devils in order for us to get this like you know sell your booty hole or sell your body as a female you know or just you know do think sell your family members how about that your family members some people do do that sacrifice them Gilly the kid for example sacrifice his son that was an indirect sacrifice by the way <laughs> you know he meaning he didn't have personally have nothing to do with it but he allowed basically Satan to be able to uh, kill um, his child sacrifice his child on the Satan that's what he did and Satan took him you know the devil took him he's a devil worshiper <clears throat> that Gilly the kid guy but anyway going on Joshua chapter 3 verse 15 and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water for Jordan overflowed his banks all the time of harvest so every harvest it will overflow and what does an overflowing river look like? Oh. This is an overflowing river. Normally, normally the waters would come only here. 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 Because this is the side. And, and then, yeah, here. Normally you could just walk here on the land. But it overflows, so... It spills over. I'm looking for a better example. Yeah. So normally the water is here, but if it rains too much, then it will overflow, and that is the time. And the oh, here, here's a great example of overflowing. Here, let's get, use this one. Right. So normally the 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 water is until here, but if it rains paranoidly like, then it could even come here, and then it starts to overflow. So, going on. In the time of harvest. <clears throat> uh, that the waters... Were, oh yeah, that's also what I wanted to show. The waters were cut, was cut off from here. Because it says downward, right? And they were here. Here, I think, yeah. As it says downward, right? Because they was here. And then they went over here, into here. So, the water that was coming down from there, that went into the Dead Sea which is also named the salt sea it went down into there and then yeah it got cut off and it turned into a mountain here and it turned into a mountain there or a wall sorry a heap here and a heap there which is a wall and then yeah so going on to over here again that the uh, Joshua chapter 3 verse 16 that the waters which came down from the from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city of Adam, that is beside Zeratan. And whose uh, and those that came down toward the sea, the sea of the plain, even to the salt sea, failed. I just showed you that. It failed to go to the, down to the salt sea, and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jer Jericho, which I just also showed. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground. They stood firm because if the water is removed right then and there, of course it's going to be wet and it's going to be muddy water. Muddy it's going to be like this and that's not going to be stable because you can't really walk stable on this you can never it's it's impossible you can't it's not stable you can't you're always going to dig in when you walk it's not going to be firm you're not going to be firm you're going to dig in it, it's it's what it's wet land a, a wet uh, not sand it's wet ground it's not even mud or you can call it mud but yeah it is, it is mud sorry it is mud i was thinking of clay sorry 
Yeah, so so here, right, if a car comes here, you already know what you need to do. You need to get out the car and start pushing because it's, it's going to dig in. And the car already went here. I bet your behind it was stuck for at least a moment. Or maybe it was lucky it got passed through. So, yeah. But yeah, you can imagine that this is not a stable or firm ground. You can't stand firm. Right, going on. In the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelite passed over on dry ground. Until the people passed. Huh? Until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. So, yeah, they passed over on dry ground. So, yeah, there you have it. And uh, yeah, that was the book of Joshua, chapter 3. I don't know what this is. Too many requests, okay. What is it anyway? Let me see. Okay. Right, so I'm going to put all these links in the description box so you can check it out for yourself. Um, they also want to teach these Edomites how to do things. They got guns. They don't need this. He probably also want to show himself to be a warrior. Why don't you sell you? Why don't you send your women? They're tough. They're tough enough. The Edomite female is the warriors of nowadays. They're the fighters. They're 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 better than men. I wanted to say equal. They're greater than men. So with that, I'm gonna say shalom.